Let's start writing our own history Let's take this road Oh, this winding, winding road Let's just take the long way home Hey, if you're ever traveling out west in early August, you go to a little bar on Mission Street called Granada Cafe. You may run into a brother named Butch. He's kind of hard to miss. Folks back home all love Butch, but I think it's safe to say that no one truly knows him. Well, hopefully this story sheds just a little light on Butch, the legend of Langston. Just keep spinning, spinning, spinning. Just keep going. The legend has it that Butch wanted to pledge Alpha during a time when um, hazing was okay and everything was, oh, I guess, above ground yeah. is the term. Um, things didn't go the way they planned, and as a result, um, he suffered some injuries multiple ways. And to keep this from being Butch University, yeah. He's able to stay here and kind of work, go to school, just exist in his little own sanctuary. This is his, this is his castle on the hill, yeah. Can you ask anybody else to go to different stories? Isn't that crazy? Well, y'all heard different stories about Butch? Langston was founded in 1897, so that means he had to be here roughly since 1898 or something like that. I really think Butch has been on campus since the 60s. I have a sister, she graduated here in 2002, and he was still popping on campus back then. I don't know anybody that knows exactly how old he is or when he came. There were rumors and everything. Butch is almost like the grandfather of the school. If you want to know who's been here the longest, it has to be him. Um, he's a part of our culture, basically. Butch is definitely like a living legend when we're walking around here. He wears Bright every color. color. Yeah. He has every, every color, color suit. Yes. And he it's had... a different suit every day. If he gonna go around telling all the girls compliments. Yeah, he's he's really cool. He compliments everybody, especially me. I see him all the time. He compliments my hair. I just got my hair red, so he likes it. He compliments my toenail polish, my outfits, everything. My wife and I, we saw him play at least 10 instruments. Um, they say, like, any instrument he puts his hand on, he can play. I mean, he knows jazz encyclopedically, and he loves music. And now I've never seen him actually off campus, maybe at a football game. I'm at the Greyhound dropping some uh, people off yeah. to go back to Tulsa. I look over to my right, I see Bush just sitting there with a big bag of luggage. I'm yeah. like, where you going? Where, where are you going? He's like, oh, I just came from San Francisco. I'm like, oh, wow. Wow. San Francisco, man? Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm thinking he never left the loo. He just yeah. always up here. A little bit socially challenged, you know. I have never seen the Langston student ever pick on him. To be honest, I don't care. I love Bush. I don't care what happened. I, I, I want to know, like, what is keeping you here at Langston University, and what about Langston University makes you want to still stand around the students? I right, what is the real story about Bush? But once in a while, you find a person who's simply a character, a very interesting human being that is his own person. parents were here in the 40s. Uh, my sister came in the mid-60s, and I came uh, 1970. When I came back to, to work here in 95, I was amazed that Butch was still here. So I'm asking him, oh, you've been here all this time. Do you know me? He's like, yeah, I remember you. I said, you know, what do you remember about me? You know, 1972, you know. He remembers some bell bottoms that I had on. And I, I have yet to meet anybody with a memory like that. He has this yearly trip that he's either West Coast, East Coast, sometimes both. He could tell you step by step the route of the bus trip, you know, where he stayed, what he ate. Yeah, it's, it's almost like uh, a photographic memory, if you would. 
And he was expressing to me one time about one of his album covers that he had an al album cover from a kiss going back to Louis Armstrong, and he was being able to name everything that was on the album cover and all of that. And I want to say, oh my God, I got a CD in my car, and I can't even remember all of the names of all the songs on the CD. And he could tell you everything that was on the album cover. He'll stick his head in there, and like, I know that song, this is this, this, and this. And that's when I find out he had like a photographic memory of everything musically that he's ever heard. He can, you can play a song, he'll tell you what it is, who played on it, what day it was recorded. Music is a passion that's ingrained in him. Like I said, he comes here every day. He takes so much pride in the caretake of the music building. I think his job is to take care of the music room. And he makes sure everything is perfect. When I first came back to Langston in 1995, we had over 20 businesses. I mean, it was booming from one end to the other. When the highway went around the town, it killed all the businesses. Now, it's just been me. In saying my prayers, I was letting the Lord know, you sent me out here to start a business, and I'm in that store all by myself late at night, and it's kind of scary. That evening, Butch came through the door, and I said, is there anything I can get you? And he says, no, I'm fine. And he sat there all evening long. And I thought to myself, I don't remember reading in the Bible about a guardian angel named Butch. That was in 1995, and he's been coming ever since. My name is Harden D. Butch Benjamin. February 15, 1942. In the 1930s, a jazz form called swing marked the pause before the big explosion of World War II shook the world. During Christmas in 1947, well, they got me a record player and they got me some records. I started collecting more of them uh, when I was in high school and I have about 4,000 of my records. I do keep track and I have a piece of paper right in there somewhere of the total amount. Dear sir, how are you today? I'm doing all right. I'm writing to make reservation for a single room. I want a single one with the lowest rate. This will be for one person. That will be me. Hope to hear from you soon. Thank you very much. Sincerely, Harden D. Benjamin. In a world where everything has changed, yeah, he's a constant. Butch has a routine. When he gets to the bus station, he's ready to take a nap. And nothing's going to stop him from taking that nap. He just takes the bus from from here to the East Coast, then back to the West Coast, and he's happy on the bus. That's how he travels. Every time he leaves, he's on the bus. Dear Mr. Benjamin, first of all, it was nice to hear that you're in great health. As for all of us here, we are in great health also. The nightly rate for a room with a single bed and share bath is $75. We always look forward to seeing you every year, and thank you for considering the Ada Plaza Hotel again for your upcoming travel to San Francisco. Thank you. Elsa Ramirez, Assistant Manager.
sometimes uh, I might get out a uh, little bit of music, like uh, maybe a few singles or a long play album by somebody who I may want to hear, listen to who I'm getting ready. And sometimes I may think that uh, I may be uh, uh, leading the group and, and me and my group are performing uh, around the country, like somewhere down in Atlanta or maybe in New York or on the West Coast. My dream is to be uh, uh, leading the group and be playing the, some of the same selections that I have in my record collection. And a lot of people will be checking us out. And they say, yeah, yeah go, Butch, or good, Butch. And, and they say, this cat here is just like Benny Goodman. It does a lot for me. It keeps me in a good mood and, and it just makes me feel good. It's, it's a whole personality is what we're selling and that's what he buys. The louder, the better he likes it. But it, you know, everybody here knows him. We, his name's Mr. Harden. We don't call him Butch, we call him Mr. Harden. And he showed up here and he started buying zoot suits from us. And we make zoot suits in over 40 different colors. And he would spend hours in here. I mean, he studies everything. And he would make lists. He would go home and he would send us letters listing the other items he wants to buy and the size. And then we would send him his stuff. Sometimes he's come in here and he's had like, um, like a red hat with a green shirt, a green and red tie, and maybe a yellow pair of pants and purple shoes. And you think to yourself, holy cow, but geez, man, he walks outside, people just stop. You come to a homecoming, people line up to take pictures with Butch because he's that much of an icon to Lynch University. Butch is aware of how other people see him and that that is now a fixture here. It's, you know, I'm 64 years old, so yeah, I'm hearing about my classmates dying all the time. It's nice to see Butch, you know. It's nice to see that familiar face. So this could be his stage, where he's on stage, and this is my stage, and everybody knows who I am here, and I can play my horn and I'm the center of attention because when folks come home to Langston, they always ask, where is Butch? Go ahead, Butch. Break it down one time, Butch. Go ahead, Butch. Break it down, Butch. Take Los Angeles, for instance. When people go there, they want to go to Hollywood and they want to see the stars and and when they come uh, out here, well, when they see me, they say, I've been looking for you. I'm sure glad I saw you. You just made my day. I got here in uh, 1967. Okay, we just thought he was, we thought then he was special. You know what, uh, I can't really speak on it, but this is an urban legend that I heard. I don't, I don't want to start anything, but I heard that um, supposedly he, he was pledging some fraternity and he, he was given a bad drug. And that may have had some kind of uh, outcome as far as how he, um, his personality changed. No, uh, when I was here, I don't remember any time where Butch was hazed or anything, one tried to do anything. A negative toward him. Oh, I haven't heard anybody yep. say anything like that. Yeah, I don't want to say that. And I come every year. I've been every year. I've not, not missed a, a homecoming since 1967. <laughs> and I know lots of people, and I've never heard that. That's, that's quite different. It was late in the summer of 1961, somewhere near the end of August, when I came to Langston. Well, as far as anybody put anything in my drink or being hazed by anybody, anything, that never happened to me at all. If you hear legends of Butch, a lot of them are gonna come from people who don't interact with them on an everyday basis. And then I think it's one of those, one of those things, it's a sensitive subject, people are maybe afraid to ask him what makes him the way he is, but like I said, to us, he's just normal. I wouldn't be surprised if he tests as a genius. Literally, just the way his mind thinks. More or less, probably along the lines of Asperger's, just a high-functioning a high intelligence. 
in the current diagnostic system, we just call everything autism spectrum disorder, and then you differentiate by levels of function. So it's not always a debilitating condition that prevents somebody from experiencing sort of those, quote, normal, you know, parts of life. They function better when there is a routine. You, you don't define the person by, by the label. You understand that that person has an experience of the world that is impacted by that particular condition. So that's just one, one of the things that you kind of notice about somebody with, who appears to have, again, I'm not diagnosing him, but appears to have autism. I mean, the fact that the hotel writes him back, you know, it's like, ah, that's incredible. The staff at the hotel are part of the extended community of people who make his life what it is. This is such a unique situation here where you've got an adult who's been living here for 50 years and you think about the number of people who've come and gone in that period of time um, and yet what's been transmitted from one generation to the next is who this guy is and how we treat him. That's amazing. Um, and if we could bottle that and transmit that throughout the rest of the country and the rest of the world, that would be phenomenal. <laughs> So what we can learn from Langston University is what are the right circumstances? Acceptance and just appreciation for that individual. Well, just looking back uh, on different things uh, pertaining to my life, I would say that I'm happy. A lot of people who you know and you feel close to is just like a, a part of a family. Ha, 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 ha.